How you doing everybody? It's uh, Sunday the 7th of February 2010 it's coming up to 9 o'clock in the evening and I went to post, do this post now there, didn't get a chance, family matters, you know yourself. Uh, these are articles in the newspaper so one of them is just a little essay, the other ones are interesting. The little essay article is about, uh, unfortunately it's maybe an essay to me and uh, you and various people but the families involved is not it's life and death stuff uh, what's happening is ordinary sector workers public sector workers are finding it difficult to get uh, to meet their bills so what you have is you've got people people that be in the lower paid sector of the public service uh, a lot of them be young people wouldn't be in, wouldn't have been in it long enough to sort of claim up the grades as it were and they're in bottom bottom rank grades and they wouldn't be earning very much money. And what's happening with this austerity programme the government's introduced? They're having to go to get wel welfare supplements to survive. That's basically all it is. Have a read of it. Makes for interesting reading if you're interested in the socio political fallout of these things. Anyway. The next thing is to do with our banksters. And it's a fascinating article. I think it is anyway. Truly fascinating. Gives you an insight into it deals with AIB and it's stockbroker arm, good body stockbrokers. You've got to cast your mind back to 2008, September, October of 2008. And what was happening then was all the stuff about it, the Irish banking system had started to come out and bank shares in particular had fallen off the edge and were going south very, very quickly. And what happened was AIB in particular were been, were been very very badly hit and they rang up their stock broken arm good buddies now it doesn't tell you this in the article but reading between the lines something like this happened <coughs> AIB rang up and they suggested to good body stock brokers that it may be a good idea to support the bank shares so what did good buddies do good buddies went out and sold large tranches of their clients equities that they have now they haven't they have what are called investment portfolios and these are for the rich and the wealthy the good and the mighty that they have on their books okay blokes and people that have investment trusts and all this sort of stuff and uh, <coughs> they break them normally up into three three elements they break them up into equities uh, property and bonds stroke treasuries okay and what they did was they went and the people that had Bank of Ireland shares, they sold them off. And with the money they supported them, and then and bought AIB shares. So it had a double effect. It forced down Bank of Ireland shares, and it forced their shares up. Okay. But that wasn't, that was only half of it. The other half of the coin was the flip side of the coin was that just at that time, their senior investment managers had released investment advice sheets to all the private clients, good bodies, private clients, telling them not just to hold Bank of Ireland shares, but to actively buy them because they consider them to be a good investment. Okay, so what you had is, you've got their senior investment guys advising the clients to buy Bank of Ireland shares, and you've got the actual the actual brokers, the guys who trade in them day in, day out, work, who work for good body stock brokers, selling the same shares that were recommended by these guys to buy, selling them actively, and buying the shares belonging to their mother company. All I know is one thing, if you try to do that in a different setup, you or I try to do that, you'd be up in front of one of our justices here, and you'd be looking at about two years for stuff like that. It's a form of insider trade and stroke technical fraud, that's what it is. And it's frowned on very, very much. So I wonder what the private clients of good body stockbrokers think about that when they read that article. Makes for interesting, I tell you, it makes for interesting reading. I'd say Mr. Good Body Stockbrokers will be on for, for more lawsuits, a lot more lawsuits. Anyway, the final thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about an article that I've already covered. I already covered the essence of this article two days ago. And in it I mentioned that NAMA was, would, is liable to be in serious trouble, and sure as shooting it is. 
and it's in trouble to the tune of 25 billion this article tells us and this article is from uh, it's written by their leading guy the independence leading chief reporter a fellow called Daniel McConnell and the opening gambit of it is the shocking cost of the taxpayer bailout to the banks is set to top 25 billion euros it has emerged which will double our country deficit this year and what he goes on to say in the article basically is that what's going to happen is the Europeans will not sign off on us trimming 30% of the value of these NAMA loans they want them virtually marked to market in other words what I always said who does Lena and these boys think they're kidding? Do you think that, that somebody from the back streets of Belfast or from the back streets of Dublin? These Europeans are highly sophisticated men. These European central bankers are going to. All this Mickey Mouse stuff works for them. All that, all that uh, Fianna Fall quick talk and all that slippery slady stuff. It don't work with them. That cute tourism doesn't work with those boys. This is German money, German and French money. They're not saying nothing anything. So they're going to give us some of the money, but we're going to have to make up the balance, and the balance looks like it's going to be 25 billion euros. Where do we get that money from? Well, you tell me. Portugal went to the bond market last Wednesday. Portugal did, and tried to raise a half a billion. We're talking about 25 billion. On top of this is on top of what we're already trying to borrow. We have to borrow 22 billion this year. We have to borrow 22 billion because of our deficit and we need another 25 it's not going to happen sorry about that that is not going to happen if this becomes public knowledge on a wider scale and this becomes accepted we are in serious serious doo doo but the obvious outcome before we go anywhere about bonds and raising the money around these banks if we if we put any money into these banks at all they're going to be nationalized then by the end of the year both these banks are going to be nationalised by the end of this year. So there's going to be a whole massive revamp of the whole Irish banking system with amalgamations going on and all sorts. And you can see it even now. I sense it even now. These banks can fill about loans and all that out of banks. It's all gone. It's all gone for the foreseeable future. Nobody's going to get any loans or anything out of banks. The money's only going one way, into the banks. to get paid back to America and Japan and all the other places that they borrowed the money from. As I told you, massive constriction of credit, massive, ongoing as we speak in our society. And as I say, the bottom line is the both these banks are definitely going to be nice ladies, by the end of this year, beginning the next year, definitely. And this is this this twenty five. If this twenty five billion comes to pass, this will create a crisis in this country. We will we will have a new government. That this this will break. This will topple this government. Or if it doesn't, you know what we may as well do? We may as well, we may as well give them their children. We may as well just give them our children and make them slaves of our children. Let them, let them enslave our children. We may as well do that because there's no battle at all. This comes to pass. This is this is a major, major, serious, serious debacle we're facing. And uh, could never be anything else. Could never be anything else with these muppets that are running the country. Anyway, we'd say we have to talk some more on this.